Okay, so this video is going to be about um, how to speed density tune a, um, I guess an E38 PCM or, or a Gen 4 LS motor. Um, pretty much the theory will work on, on virtually anything. Um, so the first thing is the mass airflow needs to be disabled. So you want to go to dynamic, put it up to an RPM that you will not reach which will prevent the mass airflow and the speed density from filtering with each other. Okay, you're gonna want to go to fuel, turn power enrichment completely off by putting it to an RPM you can't reach. Go to cutoff, put the deacceleration fuel cutoff to a temperature that your engine also will not reach. Then from there, you are going to want to do one of two things. Now, what I prefer to do is go under engine diagnosis and basically find a way to fail the mass airflow sensor. Um, so I just set it down to a low RPM to fail the mass airflow sensor uh, because the mass airflow sensor in most of these cars has an intake air temperature sensor in it. Uh, and that has everything to do with speed density fuel trims. So it kind of... It doesn't help you to unplug the mass airflow if you're not going to have intake temps because you are going to mess up your readings. Um, so this is a Camaro with a ZL1 supercharger with a splitter that splits the mass from the IAT. So I have the mass airflow unplugged just in case because I do have an IAT sensor that's still plugged in. You want to save this as a new tune. You can see here I have ZL1 tuned with cam and speed density. Not sure exactly why that just happened. From there, you're going to want to save it. Okay, after it's saved, you're going to want to go to scanner and you're going to want to have uh, a graph built. Um, I built one for long term fuel trims and short term fuel trims. Okay, so this information here, you're going to have RPM manifold pressure. This information here, you're going to find in the tune, you're going to find it under virtual volumetric efficiency. You're going to want to copy these labels here for the bottom, copy these labels for the top. That will populate what you need for the speed density. Now, when you're recording and you're tuning, obviously you need um, the manifold pressure sensor over here, an RPM over here, and then here's your graph. Now, this is the short-term one. This is the long-term one. When there's a lot of data like this, I use the short-term first. Um, to get it close before I start dialing it in with the long term. So basically you want to drive around, you want to get, get some idle in and basically all the way up to 4,000 RPMs. Once the, you try not to go over 4,000 RPMs and try not to go over 50% throttle. You're going to want to populate as much data into this as possible. Once you have this data in here, you want to go to copy. You're going to want to personally I believe you're going to want to have an Excel spreadsheet. Let me find it real quick. You're going to have an Excel spreadsheet. You're going to want to paste this data in here. Once this data is pasted in here, find the bottom corner and whatever the last number was. So, um, to be honest, there's not a lot of information here. So let's just go with this bottom corner, put a one. From there, you're gonna to wanna to fill all this information up with ones and then ramp it up to whatever this number is. Uh, and then you're gonna to wanna to do the same over here. You know, these you're gonna to wanna to put in a bunch of negative numbers here, a bunch of negative numbers here, um, because this there's no data here. Then you're gonna to wanna to recopy everything. You're gonna to wanna to copy, you're gonna to wanna to Back to your editor, you want to right click, you want to hit paste special, multiply by half. Once the data has changed, you hit calculate coefficients. We're not going to do that on there because I haven't checked this tune yet. You hit calculate coefficients, save it, upload it to the car, and repeat the process until your long term fuel trims uh, are typically under negative five, but under negative three would be better. Now you don't want to be positive. You'd always want to be a little bit on the rich side. So negative one, negative three. Once you do all this, 
uh, and you're happy with where it's at, it's up to you whether you want to turn the mass airflow back on or not. But if you turn the mass airflow sensor back on, you're going to want to basically do this exact same process, uh, but opposite. I'll make a video for that soon, uh, because you're going to want to do some mass airflow tuning as well. That way your mass airflow and your speed density are both tuned in perfect, and they can work with each other great. Um, also, make sure to come back and turn... If you're going to turn your mass back on, fix the frequency fail... Come back to engine, turn deceleration fuel or clutch fuel cutoff back on, turn power enrichment back on, uh, and from there you're good to go.